This is Mr. Smith and this is a not so quick tutorial on how to use Inkscape or at least some of the basic features. Inkscape is a very detailed program so it's really hard to go over everything in one video. Now to start off I want to change my canvas. This is my current canvas area that is not the size I want, that is not the proportions I want. So I'm going to go over to File, I'm going to go down to Document Properties which I could have also pressed shift control D to get to. And I have all these options. I want it to be US letter, so if I wanted to print it on a sheet of printer paper, it would look pretty good. And I am going to change the orientation from portrait, which is more vertical, to landscape, which is more horizontal. Because I'm going to do an outside picture, so I sort of want it to be a landscape picture. Now to start off, I'm going to add a sky. Now to do that, I'm just going to take this whole area and turn it blue by grabbing a square over here, using the square tool to draw out a rectangle. And that would be great if I wanted a nighttime sky, but I want a blue sky, a daytime sky. Instead of drawing and draw another rectangle with the square tool, I'm going to click on this cursor up here, select and transform objects. I'm going to right click on my giant black rectangle and go down to fill and stroke that will open up a new window that will stay here until I tell it to go away. I'm pretty much going to leave it here for the rest of the tutorial. And I have three options, fill, stroke paint, and stroke style. Now these two both control an outline that appears on the outer edge of a shape. I'm not really going to be using strokes in this particular tutorial so I'm just going to always press that little X there to make sure the stroke goes away. For the fill, right now it's set to black. I can pick a color down here or I can use any of these color pickers up here to select a color. I want a sky blue, so I'm going to click on a blue and then I'm going to adjust it a little bit. That looks pretty good. Alright, next up I'm going to add a sun. Again, suns are easy, it's just a circle and I drew a blue circle on a blue sky. That doesn't work out so well, so let's go down and click yellow down here. That's an oval, not a circle. I'm going to click on this arrow and stretch this out until it looks more like a circle. And I can yeah, move this a little bit over here. I tend to not like having suns in the corner. I think that's kind of weird, so I'm going to put the sun over more like that. And now to put in my ground. Now, I'm not going to use one of these basic shapes. Instead, I am going to draw it in using this tool here. And it's going to start off just you know, clicking along the edges here. And every time I click, it puts a node down, N-O-D-E, node. And as you can see, it's sort of like I've stuck my gum there, and now I have this big, long, sticky strand that's coming out, and it's all gross. Let's click on that corner that corner and this corner and now I'm going to do something a little different when I get to about here I'm not going to just click I'm going to click and drag and when I do that as you can see as I drag it is creating a curve and I decide how much I want that curve to bend which direction I want it to bend in I'm going to have it go more like that let go and then it needs to continue the curve on this side so I don't need to click and drag anymore. I'm going to just click on the very first node that I made and that'll finish it off. And right now there's no fill, it's just a line. I want there to be a fill in there so I'm going to tell it, yes I want the fill, that's this box here. I'm going to tell it to make it green and that green is good enough and I don't want a stroke, it's hard to see, let me zoom in you can see there's a very faint dark line going around this. I don't want that. If I added a stroke automatically, I'm going to go over to the Stroke tab, and I'm going to turn that off. There we go. Now, I want a tree. I'm not going to make a tree from scratch. I'm lazy. Instead, I'm going to go up to the file, go down to Import from Open Clip Art Library. The Open Clip Art Library has all kinds of wonderful stuff that's been made for you that's totally free and legal to use. The only downside is sometimes you get what you pay for when it's free. So I'm going to do a search for tree 
and most of these are Christmas trees. Now, I don't want to be a Christmas tree if I'm doing a more spring or summer type scene like this. So, you know, it, it's, it's a little risky depending on what you're looking for. And sometimes when you click on it, you'll get a summary here. Oh, it's an undecorated Christmas tree. Well, I guess that pretty much means it's an evergreen. Let's hit open. Let's see what that looks like. I suppose I could use that, but if I don't want it, I hit delete and it's gone. Let's try that again. Let's try this tree instead. A simple tree. That might be okay. Open. Yeah, that can work. Now, if I want to modify this tree, I can do that. First of all, I don't want that dark line. I said earlier I didn't like all those strokes, so I'm going to click the X under stroke paint. That makes those lines go away. Now it fits the style that I've already been doing. I can change the height and width, of course. Something else that's cool is I can ungroup shapes that I have imported from the Open Clip Art Library. You've got two options up here, group and ungroup. If I click on a shape and I hit ungroup, it will turn it into its basic component parts. So now I've got the leaves and I've got the trunk. And I could even, depending on if this was made with a bunch of circles, I could even ungroup that. Uh, looks like it was just drawn with a bunch of curves instead. That's okay. So I've got my tree here. I, if I want a second tree, I can select both of these. Hold down the shift key when you click on the additional objects you want to select. And I'm going to use the duplicate button over here. And now I have two trees. I don't want two trees that are the same size. I'm going to shrink that down. Now I didn't regroup it. It's still two shapes, so I can you know, select out. I can rotate these leaves. See how all these arrows are going out from the center? If I click in the middle, the arrows change, and now I can rotate the leaves. And if I use the corners, it's going to rotate like that, but if I use the ones on the side, it's going to stretch it in weird directions. So I can do that also. And the trunks are identical, so how about I just click on this trunk here, and I go over to these controls over here, and I flip the trunk so it looks just a little bit different. So there is my basic landscape. And you can do other things too. You can move things forward or backward by using these options here. It's very much like frames. The controls look a little different, but it's a lot of the same steps. And when I save this, so let's hit the Save button. It's going to ask me how I want to save it. I need to give it a name. The default suffix is period SVG. That stands for Scalable Vector Graphic. And you know what? That's perfectly fine. I'm going to name this landscape. I'm going to hit save. And now I have an image that's saved that I can go back and edit it or I could you know, turn it into something else. If you need it to be something other than an SVG, you can go up to file. You can export bitmap. And the default then is it will save it as a PNG file. As this is a scalable vector graphic, scalable being the key word, you can make it as big or as small as you want without any loss of quality. I could add as many pixels as I wanted, and it would just naturally stretch it as much as I needed it to be, and it would be just fine. But since everything that I have to use in my class, for the most part, will allow SVG files, go ahead and use those. If you have any questions, feel free to ask.